Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our 5-minute review playlist. In previous videos, we talked about meconium aspiration syndrome, neonatal conjunctivitis, transient tachypnea of the newborn, nephritic syndrome, nephrotic syndrome, and the differences between them. Today, it's time for amniotic fluid embolism. It's an obstetric complication that can trigger acute lung injury or worse, acute respiratory distress syndrome or worse, disseminated intravascular coagulation. And if that was not enough, it can also lead to sudden cardiac death. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Here is a case for you. Please read and pause. Let's talk about that. 39 year old, so we have advanced maternal age here. G5, P4, oh, gravity 5, that's a lot. Delivered a baby, she just delivered, so let's make her para 5. Congratulations. Several hours later, she started experiencing severe shorts of breath, cyanosis, hypotensive shock. Chest auscultation showed bilateral wet crackles. The patient started coughing up pink, frothy sputum. And then she began to bleed from her mouth, nose, eyes, ears, vagina, anus, and from the surgical wound. So she probably had a C-section. What's the most likely diagnosis? The answer is, this is amniotic fluid embolism. Risk factors include advanced maternal age, gravida of five or more, cesarean section or instrumental delivery. It can lead to acute respiratory distress syndrome, shock, hypoxemia, and DIC. We have talked about DIC before in my bleeding and coagulation playlist, so let's review it quickly. Disseminated, it's everywhere. Intravascular, the problem started in the vessel. Coagulation, that's in the beginning. In the beginning, you have a microthrombi made of platelets and fibrin. But then later, when you consume your platelets and coagulation factors, you will bleed. Oh, coagulation, fought by bleeding? That's a paradox. Yes, that's why we call it paradoxical bleeding. All over the body, I'm bleeding from every orifice, bleeding from every wound, bleeding from every scratch, bleeding from every IV site or surgical site, intravascular in the vessel, and then in the beginning, thrombosis, later, bleeding. Do not confuse DIC with TTP because they are different. Not just the pathogenesis is different, What's actually happening is different. In TTP, we have a microthrombi made of platelets only. But in DIC, the microthrombi are made of platelets and coagulation factors. And that's the difference. PT and PTT are normal in TTP. Why? We did not consume the coagulation factors. But in DIC, since the coagulation factors are consumed in this fibrin microthrombus, we will consume the coagulation factors, PT and PTT will be prolonged, and then we'll start breaking them down, D-dimer and fibrin degradation products will be high. As for commonalities, both of them have platelet microthrombi, i.e. thrombocytopenia, and both diseases have shearing of your red blood cells, i.e. schistocytes, aka fragmented cells, aka helmet cells. In DIC, I'm bleeding from every orifice, bleeding from every wound, bleeding from every scratch, bleeding from every surgical site or intravenous site. There are two clinical scenarios that you have to know by heart when it comes to DIC. Let's start with the second scenario because we just talked about that. Pregnancy, especially with advanced maternal age, C-section, instrumental delivery, gravida of five or more, placental abruption or placenta previa, especially in the peripartum period. And then what's gonna happen? Amniotic fluid embolism, here are the signs and symptoms. It can even lead to seizure, pulmonary edema, and coma, and sudden cardiac death, and then DIC. How about the first scenario? Maybe I have history of a urinary tract infection or any infection. If it's severe enough, it can spread. Sepsis, septic shock, ARDS, DIC. All of them can happen in the same patient. Why did we trigger DIC? Because we activated the tissue factor, which could be activated by bacterial endotoxins or by antigens from the fetus and they will pass from the fetus to the mother during labor, i.e. fetomaternal or materno-fetal hemorrhage, and these antigens will activate tissue thromboplastin, aka tissue factor, aka coagulation factor number three, which can trigger bzzm, coagulation. 
DIC quick review cause unknown we know precipitating factors to be more precise such as obsessory complications including amniotic fluid embolism placental abruption help syndrome hemolysis elevated liver enzyme low platelets fetal death acute promyelocytic leukemia formerly known as acute myeloid leukemia subtype M3 the famous T1517 translocation the cancer that's treated with vitamin A believe it or not and if vitamin A did not work, we'll treat you with arsenic. The poison? Yeah. If it's poisonous to you, it's going to be poisonous to your cancer cells. There are no solutions in life, only trade-offs, as Dr. Thomas Sowell said. Sepsis, snake bites, tumors, trauma, exertional heat stroke, acute pancreatitis. All of them can trigger the activation of tissue factor, which can trigger DIC. In the beginning, coagulation, because I activated my tissue factor, so I get thrombosis. Later, I activate my tissue plasminogen activator, and then plasminogen will become plasmin, and then it will start fibrolysis and bleed. Hashtag thrombohemorrhagic disease. Clinically, bleeding from every orifice, bleeding from every wound, bleeding from every scratch, bleeding from every surgical site. And this includes deep bleeding, bleeding into joints, retroperitoneal bleeding, etc. And I can also get superficial bleeding like petechia purpura ecchymoses. Let's go to the lab. I'm consuming my platelets. Platelet count is low. Thrombocytopenia. So, one of the causes of thrombocytopenia in pregnancy or in the postpartum period is DIC, which could be caused by amniotic fluid embolism. Bleeding time is prolonged. Why? Because the platelet count is low. I have consumed my coagulation factors. PT and PTT are prolonged, and the thrombin time is also prolonged. D-dimer increased. Why? Fibrinolysis. FDP increased. Why? Fibrinolysis. Fibrinogen is low. Why? It's one of the coagulation factors that we have consumed. Management. Treat the underlying cause if you can. Give the patient what they're missing. They're missing their coagulation factors. So give them fresh frozen plasma. We try not to give platelets unless it's absolutely necessary. And if fresh frozen plasma is not available or you're afraid that the patient might be allergic to one of its components, give something that has less, which is cryoprecipitate. Pros. It has less factors and less proteins, therefore less allergenic or immunogenic. Cons. It has less coagulation factors. So let's review. In DIC, plate count is low, bleeding time is high, PT and PTT are prolonged, D-dimer and FDP are also high. Now to today's topic, amniotic fluid embolism. History. Well, in order for me to have amniotic fluid, I gotta be pregnant. So a pregnant female with risk factors. What do you mean by risk factors? Advanced maternal age, gravida of five or more, placental abruption or placenta previa, preeclampsia or eclampsia, C-section, instrumental delivery, physical exam and presentation. The patient is in a state of shock. What do you mean? Hypotension, tachycardia, poor tissue perfusion. In a state of DIC, bleeding from every orifice, bleeding from every wound, bleeding from every scratch, bleeding from the incision site of C-section, coma and seizure can happen. So in my differential diagnosis, diagnosis, I have what? Eclampsia. Since this disease happens inside vessels, in my differential, what do I have? Vasculitis, angiopathy. Hypoxemia can happen. No kidding, it can lead to ARDS, which is an acute lung disease that is not cardiogenic. Do not blame the heart. Can this hypoxemia cause cyanosis? Yes. How can I diagnose this? Well, we have no time for anything. You diagnose that clinically. If you order labs, you will find the following. Decrease arterial oxygen. Decrease oxygen saturation. Widened AA gradient. Why? Because now it landed in the lung. DLCO is decreased. The diffusion limit of carbon monoxide. Why? Because the problem is in the lung now. Complications. Hey, Adam, you stink. I think you can benefit from a shower. No, not this kind of shower. Shower embolization means I had a thrombus that became an embolus, and then embolus, 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 blocking many vessels simultaneously. Acute lung injury, or worse, acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is characterized by hypoxemia for sure. And then we can trigger tissue factor and trigger DIC, which is consumptive coagulopathy, one of the causes of thrombocytopenia during or after pregnancy and sudden cardiac death. How can we manage it? It's a freaking emergency. So remember your ABCs. Airway, breathing, circulation. I need some respiratory support, that's the A and the B, and then circulatory support, that's my C. 
And if the patient needs transfusion, so be it. If you want to learn about acute respiratory distress syndrome, fat embolism, air embolism, or if you want to review your arrhythmias like a champ, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, lupus in pregnancy, placenta previa placental abruption, and twin-twin transfusion syndrome, download my obstetrics and gynecology high yields course also at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.